James chapter 2 opened up with the danger of being partial. The danger of treating people differently uh, because of so many reasons. Uh, many of those reasons ungodly reasons. And so what I want to try to do, uh, give me a, a, a signal if you are back running now. Uh, what I want to do is to show you a clip of a particular experiment that was performed just to stress how a society of people can be so much partial, uh, prejudice, uh, treat others with contempt for no justifiable reason. You may have your seat. I think they are shutting down the computer and starting it all over again. If you are able to get it working, we will do that. But let me read from the book of James chapter 2 from verse 1. James chapter 2 from verse 1. He said, my brethren, if you have your Bibles, you can please open and follow me as I read. Thank you, Brother Charles, for that reading from the Good News Bible. I'm reading now from the New King James. James chapter 2, look at verse 1. My brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus, the Lord of glory, with partiality. For if someone will come into your assembly, a man with gold rings and fine apparel, and there will also come in a poor man in filthy clothes, you pay attention to the one that is wearing the fine clothes and you say to him, sit here in a good place. And then you say to the poor man, stand here or sit here at my footstool. Verse 4, now have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brethren, verse 5. God has chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith. And hears of the kingdom, which he had promised to those who love him. But you have dishonored the poor man. Do not the rich oppress you and drag you into the courts. Do they not blaspheme the noble name by which you are called. If you really fully fulfill the royal law of the scripture. And this is the royal law of verse 8. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. But if you show partiality, you commit sin. Do me a favor and turn to your neighbor. I know you may be afraid to say this, but don't worry, you are in the church. They will not fight you. Tell your neighbor for me, if you show partiality, you commit sin. And say it again, if you show partiality, you commit sin. And that's not my word. That is the scriptures. If you are so partial in your thoughts and actions and everything that you do, that's what the Bible says in verse 9. You commit sin and you are convicted by the law as a transgressor. For anyone that keeps the whole law and yet stumble in one, he is guilty of all. The one that says do not commit adultery, the same person said do not murder. The same God that said you should not murder, said you should not. And the list goes on in the book of Exodus chapter 20, not covered. So speak and so do, as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. Verse 13, for judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown mercy, and mercy triumphs over judgment. Now, this, this two minutes video clips that you're going to watch, I know many of you have seen it before. Uh, to some people, it's going to be offensive, so I apologize ahead of time. But it shows how we have come, how our world has come in being partial. Can you make sure what we are watching, they are seeing it, those who have joined us remotely as well. So look at this. It's an experiment called Black and Brown Girl versus and White Board of Girl. Education, the famous case that desegregated schools in the 1950s. Dr. Kenneth Clark conducted a doll test with black children. He asked them to choose between a black doll and a white doll. In most instances, the majority of the children preferred the white doll. I decided to reconduct this test as Dr. Clark did to see how we've progressed since then. Can you show me the doll that you like best or that you'd like to play with? I'm 
can you show me the doll that is the nice doll? And why is that the nice doll? She's white. And can you show me the doll that looks bad? Okay. And can you give, and why does that look bad? Because it's black. Hmm. And why do you think that's a nice doll? Because she's white. And can you give me the doll that looks like you? Fifteen out of the twenty-one children preferred the white doll. Um, like I said, you'll find this offensive. And this experiment was first carried out in the fifties. So this lady that you were hearing her voice just now was a high school student that decided to do the same thing recently. When the experiment was carried out in the 50s, overwhelmingly, all of the children, even the black ones, preferred the white doll and they gave the same reason. Because the black doll looks, you can fill in the blank. So this young lady decided, okay, that's a long time in the 50s. Let's, let me try it again. And it's worrisome that she conducted the same experiment amongst black kids and 15 out of 21 of them still repeated the same thing that they repeated over 60 or close to 70 years ago. For me as a pastor, it's worrisome because that is the reason why the society treats many of us like we do not matter. I'm not an Afrocentric preacher. I'm a Bible preacher. But you got to understand that we are not dealing with the root of the problems. There's no political organization that can fix a demonic problem. God hates partiality to the core. Just being partial because of your preference, your difference. God just hates people or hates the idea of people being partial. I will share a story with you that I still find absorbed, absorbed today. So one of the travels I made on mission trip to the beautiful island of Montserrat. If you know where Montserrat is, can you wave your hands? I know many of you don't know Montserrat. Beautiful island. Coming back, went through Puerto Rico. And there, I was on the line in Puerto Rico. <laughs> God, it's partiality. That's where I'm starting from. But I'll try and run quickly and then we ended up with faith without works is dead. So there was I in Puerto Rico standing on the line, beautiful place, very long line, sometimes during the high peak traveling season, those places, you just, you just stay on the security line. And I looked ahead of the line and saw a man my color and he was picking people out of the line randomly for secondary screening. Stay with me. I'm telling you God hates partiality. A man my caller, and I discovered that everyone now on that line, there were so many white colored people. Permit me to do color and all of that. It's not racist. God sees colors, he created colors. A lot of so there are just a handful of us people my color on the line. But I discovered looking at from a distance. That every single person this dude, my caller, was picking out for secondary screening. They were people my caller. Even though we were just a few people like that on the line. So I got close to him. He pulled me out. And I told him to his face. I said, I know you will 
pull me out. And he said, why? I said, because I'm black. And all the people that you have been pulling out, even though you are black too, they were black. All the people on a very long line. We are people of color. Wow. You can count in one or two hands. Is that I know? So I was ready that you're going to pull me out to be screened secondarily because you are my caller. And in your mind, everyone that should be checked again are people your caller, my caller. And he got angry. He got offended. He said, I don't know why people talk like that. I said, That's not, this is a simple, there's no, we are not in a laboratory. Every single person that looks like you, they must be demonic. They must be bad. They must be robbers. They must be carrying drugs. They must be this. They must be that. So in your mind, you look at a long line, people of different races, different color, and every single person you pulled out to be searched again for someone your color. You ever heard of black versus black racism? I think it's one of the major things we are contending with now. Where people just hate you for no reason. And they are not ashamed to show it. So I start with this warning. From James chapter 2 from verse 1. He said when you have faith and you are a child of the living God. Do not show partiality. Do not treat people differently because of prejudice. I'm going to break it down because it's difficult to treat everyone the same way, right? It takes extra effort and extra grace. If there is a seat and it's offered in your assembly, make it so that anyone that choose can sit on that seat. That's what the Bible says, not my word. That's why I don't know where we got all these high exalted seats that is only for people whose family are the family of the... He said, go, go, just go, go to verse 2 and then verse 3. Let me read. Somebody would think, Pastor Victor, you have come again. Go on. If somebody should come in your assembly when you're having a good time like this and you all are looking at me like, I don't know where this man is going to, to this morning. Calm down. We are going to have a safe landing together. He said, someone just showed up, has gold, you know, earrings and all of that, bling bling. So, honestly, when I read the scriptures, honestly, honestly, when I read the scriptures, I think those people that wrote those stuff then, they don't, they, they are talking about our days. They are talking about now. They have the fine apparel, gorgeously dressed, and then somebody else came in who was poor, doesn't have nothing, and look at what you do. Verse 3, and all of your ushers start to run in. Sir, we are waiting for you. And then you usher in the one that looks so great on the outside. And you despise the one that looks so ordinary on the outside. He said you have shown partiality and that is not godly. That is not godly. The, pr the place where it is more severe was when it says, when you show partiality, you have committed a sin. I know some of you can identify somebody who committed a sin. Somebody, you know, did this. He killed someone. He did that and all of that. But he said, when you show partiality, you treat people different. In a prejudice, pre what if I, the Englishes are just clashing in my brain right now. You treat people differently because of your ungodly premonition. You have committed a sin. So sometimes we will go home and say, God, I sinned today. No one saw it, but I elevated Toby in my heart and I put down Charles in my heart simply because of what I could see. That is a sin. That is a sin. So we saw black children picking up white dolls as a preference to play with. If it is just preference, I just like it. But then the question asked, which one do you think is evil? And you saw a man because of what had been drummed into his psychic, picking something that is his color to show that it's evil. I've had an accident here in New York City. A white man came from his lane, hit my car. Brand new car then, a few years old. And the police came. 
saw my car was badly damaged. Nothing happened to his car. He hit me with, they call the, those, they don't make them anymore, Astro Vans. The thing, the, 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 what do they call the, the bonnet, the boot, the whatever. But bumper is all metal. As a matter of fact, they have to change the whole front bumper of my car then, Chrysler Pacifica, the old one. They saw my bumper all over the floor. They saw his car parked, nothing happened. Anyone that saw that could have known this guy swept from his lane, came to this guy's lane, messed up this young man. And they left me there. The, I called 911. Abandoned. And they went to the man. And they were getting a report consoling him like the whole world had left loose. New York City. Utica by Rockaway. No, not Utica. I take that back. Atlantic Avenue by Rockaway. Then Brooklyn. So I screamed like a madman on the street. I said, what is wrong with you guys? I said, I called you. They got the report and they said, okay, now we can go. Can we move this out of there? I said, you, you, must, be, you must be kidding me. They are so lucky I don't have bad words in my bank. I said, I called you. Any blind man can see that this guy swept from his lane to come and hit me. My bumper is on the floor. You arrived at the scene. You never asked me a word. That cannot be right. God is report and they said, let's pack you out of the way. A woman I love so much that was clamoring for justice, fairness once called me to the side. I won't mention her name so that you won't demonize her. Called me to the side. He said, Pastor Victor, I cannot trust a policeman in New York City. I said, why? He said, you, you are a wonderful woman. You he said, no, I cannot. I'm not asking you not to trust me. I said, what happened? He said, I was there on the corner of Rogers Avenue. I've forgotten a long time ago. He said, I was there on the corner of Rogers Avenue. They stopped this black man. They were searching him. They found nothing in him. And then there was the, ah, we're going to let him go. And one of them took something and put it in his pocket. He said, they searched him all over, found nothing. And simply because they must get a culprit and book someone and put someone ID in their database. One of them quickly slipped something in his pocket and they handcuffed him and took him. He said, I stood there helplessly, couldn't do nothing. It wasn't in the days where people have cell phone and record everything. We live in evil days. That is why if you believe in righteousness, you must stand for righteousness. You must live righteously. Righteously, You must preach righteousness without hating. You must be convinced of your conviction. And you must stand against evil. Sometimes you're going to be the only one. Or if there are others, you'll be in the minority. God hates partiality. treating people differently simply because of the color of their skin or because of how much money they have in their pocket or because of the neighborhood that they live in or because of the car that they ride in. May God never let us be a church that we glamorize things that we only see but we forget the virtues of godliness and righteousness which are the real virtues that God looks when he looks at a man. And that is why there is so much competition. Everybody wants to buy a very big car. Everyone wants want to wear a very glamorous cloth because they know if you dress a certain way, you will be addressed a certain way. God! God! Hates partiality. Partiality is not from God. Don't treat people differently simply because of how they look like. Many times in that treasure, that life, that individual that looks, looks so ordinarily, there are extraordinary graces that you cannot see. Many of us, we judge people from afar. 
without taking time to get close to them enough to know who they really are. God hates partiality. So, Pastor Victor, what are you talking about? There is no problem in preferences or differences. This is where I want to balance it out. There is no problem with having a preference. Are you with me? You have the kind of food that you love. I have the kind of food that I love. You don't judge me because you eat only kosher. And I decide to eat pork. I don't, I don't eat pork, <laughs> by the way. You don't judge me by that. You don't judge me because... Come here, come here, Toby. Come here, come here, come here. Come here, come here. You, 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 how can you see Toby without wearing a what? You can, you can just fill in that blank. Uh, can you see Toby without wearing a... So you can't judge him because that is his preference and judge me because I choose not to. Go back to your seat. Don't let me mess you up this morning. My, uh, Apostle, Mike, uh, Apostle Mike, because you decide to watch TBN and at the same time I'm watching European soccer does not make you more righteous. Some people just go like, oh, I watch TBN for five hours. And so, you can still be watching TBN and be committing all manner of sins in your heart and be cursing out the preacher that is preaching. And simply because you watch TBN, the, the, the Trinity Broadcasting Network, for five hours, and somebody is sitting there watching European soccer, does not make him a sinner and make you a saint. Come out of it. All these over is just preferences, differences, choices. And thank God that we live in a country where we have choices. Anything you order in a restaurant, they will tell you how do you want it, how do you want your steak. They will ask, how do you want your water, Fiji water, bro water, pure water, ice water, with ice or with lemon. And I, I, was, I was doing a sermon the other day and I discovered that America offers at least 17 different choices of water. 17 choices. And there are parts of the world that don't have a choice. May God have mercy on us. So how do you want it? Fiji water, pure water, alkaline water, whatever it is. <laughs> Even though they are feeding it from the same tap, they won't tell you. So there is nothing wrong with preferences and differences. And that is what I wanted to understand. The world is beautiful because we have choices. God does not endorse uniformity. Stay with me. He only commands unity. Psalm 137, unity, is it 137 or 133? Unity and uniformity, totally different. Uniformity is all of us are the same, going the same direction, thinking the same way. And all. That's uniformity. That is what happens when people wear uniform. Uniformity, right? Can you imagine walking into this church this morning and everyone here in this building that is colored white, everyone is wearing white, the chairs are white, all the microphones, the instruments, everything all white. It will be boring. God created choices to show beauty in color. So there is nothing wrong with personal preferences, with personal differences. She prefers to wear camel. I'm wearing a yellow or whatever it is. She may come in and wear. There's no problem with that. I, I don't enjoy a church where you go and everyone is wearing white. No, I don't. I'm sorry I don't enjoy it. So there are differences. There are preferences and that is okay. But when it gets to partiality that you treat someone different because of what they are wearing, because of who they are, because of what they are driving, that is not God. It is the devil. And the enemy will use anything to divide us if we allow him. Samsung, iPhone. That has nothing to do with eternity. It's just your preference. I scream and shout sometimes when I preach. Somebody you are so much in love, in love with can be just preaching and just, just smile, just laugh. If they are saying the authentic word of God, it's nothing but preference. If you are a coffee drinker, do not hate people who drink tea. It's nothing. It's got nothing to do with your eternity. It's just your preference. You need to see how people who sing only hymns, hate passionately, 
compassionately. People will sing contemporary. And it may be the same words. But simply it's because it's arranged differently. And the enemy is using things that are non-essential to divide us. So there are preferences. There are preferences. As long as those preferences are not sinful. I put it somewhere in my notes so that I will not forget. If you have stayed a minute and a half with my wife, you will see how different we are in many areas. It will only take God to bring people that are that different together so madly in love. We are so different. I want my food cold. She wants ours hot. I'm serious. So when you make the food, it's either I put it for the fan to blow to make sure it's cold or I put it there. And if you have ever come to my house, you understand what I'm talking about? I put it there just to cool down. And my wife loves the one that you put in the mouth. And in. <laughs> she just loves it that way. She cannot force me to eat. I'm going to get my tongue burnt. And I cannot force her to eat. We get to the restaurant. She wants a steak burnt. I just want mine well done, but I don't want burnt steak. The only time I want something that is burnt is a burnt offering unto the Lord. So different. My wife will hear, wear a blazer and she will tell you that she's overdressing. What? That is business casual for crying out loud. You need to know sometimes how we fight. I say, no, you can't wear this. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to control what you wear. Spice it up, baby. Don't let them. Come on, you're Pastor Victor's wife. What's wrong with you here? And the children will just keep making fun and say, Mommy. The other day, in fact, went, went into our closet and took all of them blazers, some that she had not worn in years. So different. And you know your, your brother. I can wear it right from the store if it looks good. She so different. Of course, you, you, you know our complexion is different too. I am closer to Damien. My wife will give a testimony for getting something on sale at a Dollar Tree. Don't let her hear that I told you so. I got it from the Dollar Tree and I put in a coupon. Really? Preferences, differences, and we are cool with that. Preferences, differences, that's how God made us. Preferences, differences, I can go on and on and on and on and on. So how do we remain joyfully married? We respect our differences. We don't interfere with our personality. Sometimes you need to see me when I'm making a presentation just to convince my wife, we got to do this. Maybe this is not, God has blessed us. Calm down. We respect in a very godly way our personal differences or individual preferences. Partiality is not godly. To be partial means to be prejudiced to be unfair, to be subjective, to be bigoted. But I, want, I need to warn you, our world is pro promoting it like it is normal. Our world is feeding us all manner of evil, whatever, like it is normal. Sometimes it is tough to stand on your conviction, to be fear at all times. But that is the where love is. Do not alienate people because they are Democrats and you are Republican. There's going to be a lot of surprises in heaven. Some Republicans will not make it. And some Democrats will be the one that are calling the shot. <laughs> because you don't get to heaven based on your political preferences. You know, we've got to a stage in our country where one party demonizes the other. They just condemn. I'll get to that. But just, just. It's just political party preference. Come off it. God appreciate it when we are different. But he hates it when we are partial. If the Lord is blessing you, can you shout a big amen? The danger with partiality is that it does not end there. Partiality 
leads to marginalization. You marginalize people. You draw a line. Then marginalization leads to demonization. When you have drawn a line, you treat them like they are alien. Don't go to that place because they are Baptist. They are not Pentecostal. The man said about his experience, I don't know whether it was just a theatrical, whatever, went to heaven, and he's, he's a very solid, orthodox, and he said he was looking for his church in heaven. He said, we are here, we are from the Presbyterian College of Believers, sanctified, and, and he was looking for his church, and when he has wasted all of his time and everyone's time looking for his church, they said, man, we don't have church buildings here. Everyone is one united by the blood of the Lamb. You just stop that nonsense that you are doing out there. Some of us cannot speak to people simply just because they are not part of your denomination. Any denomination that alienates and demonizes is not of God. It must be from the enemy. Marginalization leads to demonization. Demonization is so, so bad. It leads to alienation. Alienation then fuels the fire of destruction. You want to destroy somebody completely simply because you are not thinking exactly the way you are thinking. When people's preferences are not ungodly, respect them. So I'm going to preach it like five more times so that you understand what I'm saying. When people's preferences are not ungodly, respect them. When people's preferences are not ungodly, respect them. When people's preferences are not ungodly, what do you do? Respect them. So let me read to you again. Verse 1. Do not hold faith of our Lord Jesus Christ with partiality. If you truly have faith and that faith is from God, you must not allow culture, race, nationality, political preferences, where you show up and where you don't go to divide you. You must make sure you respect people for who they are. So let me quickly give you a few suggestions to that. I'm still going to go to faith without works, but this is how to lay the foundation. Number one, show respect always to anyone at any time. Be kind and be understanding even when it is difficult. That's number one. Show respect if people's preferences are not ungodly. Just show respect. Number two, look beyond what is only visible. She dresses a certain way. This is how she speaks English. This is how he hollers and preach when he does. Look beyond only the things that are seen. Did you hear what the Bible says? It said the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen, they are eternal. The people that you judge and you condemn, they have some treasure that you have no idea of those treasures simply because you're only looking at the things that are seen. Number three, make the Bible your final authority in any and every issue of life. Not your political party, not people's opinions, not what is trendy now that will be obsolete a week from today. Nothing but the Bible. Whatever the word of God says, if the Bible calls it a sin, then it is a sin. If the Bible said you must show love, then you must show love. When the Bible says it is wrong, 